Okay, I think that we're live. Great. So hi everyone. Um, I'm Jess Ranke. I'm the property manager and event director at the Crest Pavilion. Um, and Janine is on. She is the interim branch manager for the Egg Harbor Library. So this is the next program in our armchair, armchair travel month. Um, and today we're going to be talking about um, some tools and trips, tr tricks and tips on how to um, have a unique travel experience. Um, a lot of it's based on things that I've used, which um, I hope that Janine has a few that she'll share too. And we also have some books that we'll cover. So let me share my screen. And next week I'm on, don't forget. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how to travel for free. So that's yes, amazing. yes. Find <laughs> and free stuff. Then you'll be really styling. Um, okay, so uh, like I said, I'm going to go over the tools that I typically use. Um, some a U.S. trip that I took, um, and some other places that I've stopped, uh, and then we'll talk about Wisconsin attractions and um, resources and some takeaways. So let's get started. So probably one of the easiest and simplest tools that you can actually incorporate into all of your travel is um, something that, that's actually on, um, I think it's the, I, it's the Apple Maps, um, and it's actually avoiding highways. So essentially what you do is you um, pick your destination, and then um, once you once it gives you the directions, you actually click on where your destination is. And then um, right under it, you'll see where it says driving options. So if you go ahead and avoid highways, you can actually find a lot of cool uh, off the beaten path. So like my husband and I have actually used this for, um, for traveling in Europe, even when we rent a car as we just, we avoid highways. And then even when we were, I think we were out of, we were out of francs, so we had to, we tried to avoid tolls so that we didn't, or not francs, euros, um, so we tried to actually avoid tolls. So if you're able to get cell service, um, I don't know, Janine, have you ever used this feature, the avoiding highways or avoiding tolls? No, it can really, I mean, it can send you like, like let's say that you did it, I mean, we took some crazy routes when we were in Spain where we were avoiding tolls. I mean, it can take you on some crazy routes and you're definitely off the beaten path, but that's one of the first tools that I use on my phone um, is just avoiding highways. But then you got to remember to turn it off because um, pretty soon you're in you're in Door County and you're trying to avoid highways, which is pretty hard on a peninsula. So that's the first really basic tool that I use. Um, and then this book actually came out I think five or six years ago. The first edition. It's called Atlas Obscura. So it's a um, collection of editors that pull together kind of the, the hidden, the world's hidden wonders. Um, and then they actually just launched a second edition, um, which is actually on Hoopla. So it's going to go ahead and click through. So if you're not familiar with Hoopla, um, you can log in uh, with your uh, Door County Library card information. Or if you go to the Door County Library's main page, you can actually find it there. So I just wanted to show you that you can check out Atlas Obscura um, for free on Hoopla. The only thing that's interesting about it is it's not quite as, um, I guess, robust as a lot of other Hoopla books. Um, you can kind of, if you can kind of see here, you can scroll through the different regions. So like, let's, uh, let's select, the U.S. on here. I think you can see my, I hope you can see my screen. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's scroll down to USA. Um, we'll just pick, we'll pick Illinois, for instance. And then it'll scroll you to Illinois and it'll show you, um, you know, all the interesting things in the Midwest that you can find. Um, and this is just kind of like a, the tip of the iceberg. Um, the kind of co the cool thing about Atlas Obscura is it actually um, even has a website, which I'll show you in a second. So um, you can kind of see the 
all the fun places you can visit in the US. So let's go back to, okay. So Atlas Obscura is one of my absolute top tools um, because as I'll show you here, their website's really interesting. So if you're on the road, for instance, you can, and this is worldwide, I guess I've never tried it in um, all countries that I've been to, but um, it did work in France and it did work in Spain. So um, as you can see, this is what the interface looks like on your phone. So you can actually click what's near me and it'll populate a map. So obviously I pulled this up in Door County and so Al Johnson's um, popped up as one of the cool uh, nearby places, but we're just gonna hop onto their website really quick. So um, we'll go places near me. I'm sure that that's working. Yep, it's working, sharing. So yeah, you can kind of see everything that's near us, all the interesting, I mean, obviously Nelson's Hall is on there. Um, let's see, what else? Schoolhouse Beach. Um, and all kinds of interesting things. One other thing I want to show you about this. So let's say that you, I actually created an account. So um, when you create an account, you can actually like flag things. So if you're kind of just poking around in their website and you see, oh, well, this is kind of cool. You want to go, um, let me see. So you can actually, all these are trips that they offer, but let's go back to their main page. Um, I'm gonna just search, let's just search Chicago. I've done that one before and there are some cool things that pop up. So a lot of unusual trip, you know, the secret agent supply company have been there before. Um, all kinds of fun, different things to do. And you can actually see, so if you go, click on all the options. These are community picks. So that means that the top ones are gonna show up of you know, recommended um, Atlas Obscura. And then there are recently added ones. So the other cool thing is once you build a profile on here, you can actually go in and um, add things. So, or maybe you wanna keep things secret. So. Um, another really interesting feature that they added to their site is um, food. So different foods. So it's kind of funny on there now they have the how to make ice cream cocktails like a true Wisconsinite. So you can go in and then it actually um, highlights different things in Wisconsin, like different like Turks in. Um, so you, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Um, so they've really built a robust tool here. So that website is probably one of my favorites. And like I said, one of my favorite features that they have is um, their mobile website. It's not an app, so you just pull their website up on your phone and then it geotargets you so you can, geolocates you so you can find the cool places. That's one of my favorites. Um, another really good one that I use is actually use um, Google Maps, both the desktop version and um, the phone app. So the desktop version is really fun because uh, when you're planning your trip, you can actually um, take, you know, find your different stops that you want to go to, and then you take and you put them in um, a map. So you could put them in. Um, basically you put them in this map and you can kind of chart your course. So the trip that I want to talk about is actually we took, um, my husband and I drove uh, a car for our parents up um, from Florida to Wisconsin and um, I've driven that route many times. So we decided to kind of switch things up. We had a little bit more time and so we, we were able to make a bunch of really fun, cool stops, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, and then if you don't have the Google Maps app on your phone, I really recommend it um, because you can easily find uh, things like obviously the easiest stuff like gas and groceries, but um, you can actually find like um, photos that have been submitted. So as you, you know, as other people explore places, you can see their photos. It's just a really interesting way to do it. And then um, if you also, even it'll kind of do that geolocate thing with you as well. So if you are somewhere 
and you want to see like, for instance, like, oh, cool things to see around here, it'll kind of populate what's hot and what's interesting. So that's another one of the top tools. So this is, so Airbnb, I know is pretty controversial, um, but I've used it to find some pretty unique stays, um, specifically because of their filtering tools are really neat. There are other websites that exist, like um, for instance, in France, there's a lot of um, agritourism that their government supports. And so they have websites for agritourism you can go in and you can find, or sorry, it was in, in Italy. You go in and you can find, um, you know, wineries and vineyards and farm stays to stay at. But Airbnb is a tool that we've used a ton and I'm just gonna quickly show you how to navigate it. So Palm Springs, um, a friend and I went for her birthday a couple years ago and we wanted to do something um, different when we were there. So we didn't want the typical Palm Springs experience. So what I did is I actually, and I tried to find, we stayed in a psychedelic tower that was like an old, um, I don't know, I think it was like an old tourist attraction. Um, it was an old tourist attraction that actually got moved and then they turned it into a tiny house and they don't have it on there anymore. But anyway, I'm just going to kind of show you. So uh, make sure I'm still sharing the right screen. Okay, so once you're in Airbnb, you can actually um, go through the filters and then obviously you can pick all the filters that you want. But if you want a unique, interesting stay, they have all these new options here. Um, so whenever I travel, um, I like to, if I can, work in a farm stay. So um, then, you know, I'm staying somewhere and hopefully being able to like work on the farm or do something interesting like that. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to select I mean, an island. I did find a houseboat that I could stay in, but it never ended up working out. Um, but yeah, so you go ahead and let's just select I mean, an igloo, a lighthouse, a tiny house. You can kind of see the running total here. So um, 71 states. So we'll click on that. And then you can kind of scroll through and you can see like, obviously you can see like, depending on what your budget is, you could search that way. Um, one of the interesting ones when I did a real quick search is, you know, you could stay, if you're into that sort of thing, you could stay in a tent, like an off the grid Zen tent. So that's kind of cool. And then I'm still sharing the right screen. Okay, and now let's take a look. If we go to, I did find a really interesting one on here. I mean, they're all pretty cool. You can stay in these geodesic domes. Mm, this one was really interesting. It's just, it looks like a earth a home. But so you can see, you can kind of just pull up anywhere and then you by using those um, filters you can find some really interesting um, unique places to stay so maybe what we usually do is well, well when we land somewhere we kind of do the more traditional hotel route just because um, because then you know we know we have a solid place to sleep um, the first night and then um, we get you know, a little bit funkier with our accommodation. So that's a really cool resource to use. The other one that I was maybe going to pull up here that I didn't include in my slideshow was um, camp, with hip camp, which I just stumbled on the other day, um, which is actually really interesting too. So if you're into camping, um, there's all kinds of different places where it's just people's homes that, um, that some of them provide camping, some of them just allow you to pitch a tent. So like you can see kind of the same thing or like if you just wanted, if you wanted to search, you know, Wisconsin, what's available, you can kind of see there was a You know, some people are simply just letting you use their backyard, which is just fine. If you want to pitch a tent, 
Uh, what is this roll console? Yeah, and then it kind of has a similar layout in which you can, um, you know, scroll through photos. There are reviews, recommendations. It says, you know, you can bring you bring your own tents, trailers. So that I thought was really cool. Um, it's a newer thing, um, especially right now when people aren't super comfortable staying in other people's spaces. Um, you can bring your own tent. But, I mean, look at this. You could go wine country glamping getaways and, you know it's it's more like rustic cottage approach and i don't know anyway so yeah so there's lots of cool options we'll go back to the presentation so kind of when i'm building my trip i you know use the off the off the highway tip um and usually pre-map it out so that I kind of, or, you know, I kind of just know where I want to be on which days and then really let the accommodations and the attractions dictate where we're going to stop. Um, and then, of course, at any time when you want to just go home, then you can put the highways back on and then zip to wherever you're going. So, um, so I'm going to share just kind of using those techniques what um, what we did to get from uh, Florida up to Wisconsin. So I used, you know, obviously Google is your friend for sure. So I used a blend of Atlas Obscura. We didn't actually do any Airbnbs on this trip just because um, we had, we actually had a little camper with us. So we just camped um, on our way up there. So I'll kind of show you some of the interesting, so you can see my Google My Maps. Um, which I've created, let me be able to show you. I needed a link here. No, I didn't. So with Google My Maps, you can just go. Oh, forget it. I can show you at the end. But you can add the pinpoints and then you can actually share your trip with other people. So like those are also fun when you're like, let's say that you have guests coming to town and you just want to give them, you know, some cool things to do. You can build your own map and then, um, you know, create live links to the location. So like, um, you know, my sister's bachelorette party was 10 years ago, but I still have the old map of what I was planning of where we were stopping on her on her little excursion. So anyway, those are kind of fun to look back on. But okay, so Casadega was our first stop. And this was something that we actually found through Atlas Obscura. So um, it is a town of spiritualists and mediums in Florida. So it was settled um, in the late 18, pretty much the early 1900s um, as a spiritualist, spiritualist community. So um, it's really kind of just a cool place. Like I remember we pulled in there and my husband, this guy was walking barefoot and he said, take your shoes off. It makes you feel grounded. Um, and it's actually, if you're, um, there's a song that it's in, um, it's in a, I can't think of the artist right now, but I'd heard of Casadega reference before. I mean, people go there. We didn't stay there, but people will go and like stay in um, the hotel there and then um, communicate with dead loved ones. Um, really interesting. Um, they have a bookstore um, and a camp. So like people who want to become spiritualist mediums, they can actually go there. So that was a really kind of interesting um, place and it was because a lot of Florida, especially in the northern portion, I feel like it's pretty developed. This is just a really interesting view. You get off the beaten path and you see Casadega. So it's just kind of a really interesting spot. I actually got a chakra report there that was kind of interesting. So, so that was our first stop, um, and then then it was on to Savannah. So we stayed in Savannah. And um, we knew, I think I just did some Googling of, you know, famous spots in Savannah. And one of them was the Forrest Gump bench. 
So um, the bench actually isn't there. The bench was just put there for the movie. So you can kind of see that the bench, it was just to the right of the main um, pathway. So uh, yeah, so there's no bench there anymore. Um, but shoot, did I just lose my screen? Here we go. Okay, there's no bench there anymore, but um, we did get to see where it was. And then um, one of the other fun things I like to do is check out hole in the wall places. So there was this hole in the wall um, called Pinky Masters, which um, Jimmy Carter made famous because he announced his candidate for candidate candidacy for president. Actually, in this bar, he famously stood up on top of the bar and announced it. I just noticed this that he has an I closed wall skis sticker there. So <clears throat> kind of the things that we do when we go on trips, like I said, is we'll try to find kind of the funny, like free things um, or inexpensive things. And then, um, you know, we look up things like the best sandwich hole in the wall place. We're so lucky that we have Google because that helps you build a trip even on the fly really easily. Okay, so this is another kooky one. So um, we were near Corbin, Kentucky, or we were driving through Kentucky and we were trying to figure out where to stay. And it was kind of one of those situations where we didn't know if we wanted to drive further because it was getting dark. And so we were trying to like figure out um, where to stay. So I had my Google Maps up and um, I was just kind of researching I had my Google, Google Maps pulled up and I was researching places to eat and historic places and came upon Corbin, Kentucky. There's not really much going on in Corbin, Kentucky, except, and I'm not really into Kentucky Fried Chicken either, but I do like a historic, interesting roadside attraction. So we stumbled upon the first Kentucky Fried Chicken. So interesting story about this place. So it actually, so the first and I'm sure that you really care about the history of Kentucky Fried Chicken, but it's fascinating. So the first place that um, Colonel Sanders actually sold um, the chicken was in a gas station and he didn't actually do very well there. But um, something happened where people started catching on. And so the first Kentucky Fried Chicken was part of this um, Sanders court. So it was a spa resort that's and bathhouse that actually um, served Kentucky Fried Chicken. So that's an interesting combination. Um, but it was just really interesting because you go in and it's got this like Tudor style look on the outside and these beautiful like dark wood booths and it used to be um, table service and not fast food. So yeah, it was really interesting. So there you go. If you want to go to the first Kentucky Fried Chicken, you can go to Corbin, Kentucky. Okay, so then we were on to Wisconsin. So I've been to House on the Rock a couple of times with family. Um, it is, oh, looks like I put, have the Sanders photo there too, but oh, going back. Okay, so been to Spring Green. Janine, have you been to the House on the yes, Rock? Yes, I loved it. Yeah, so um, <laughs> at this place, I've been a couple of times. Um, first time, I think when I was like 11 or 12, um, but went back and it's just as amazing as I remembered. So if you're not familiar with House on the Rock, um, the story is, is that there was an architect that loved Frank Lloyd Wright and he wanted to be his, um, Alex Jordan is his name, he wanted to work with Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright said, no, you will never work with me because he showed him some plans and Frank Lloyd Wright thought that they were too, um, I guess, ostentatious. Well, the guy said he didn't care. He was going to go ahead and build this amazing, crazy house that has uh, the world's largest indoor carousel. Um, it has like hundreds of self-playing instruments. It has this, um, let's see, it has this like, what is it called? It's the Skywalk that jets out over the bluffs. I mean, it's very elaborate. I mean, 
you when you go there you can choose like one two or three like you can choose to only do one section but you got to do all three uh, because you got to see the entirety and you got to give yourself a day um, so house in the rock is probably one of my favorite off the beaten path um, and you know i suppose for those who know it doesn't really seem off the beaten path but it's definitely quirky so um yeah so house on the rock was really cool um you can kind of see some photos here but it just doesn't do it justice so it's it's amazing so that is house on the rock so while we were there um we actually stayed in Dodgeville, which isn't too far away. So this place is still open, but when we stayed there, I think I was, yeah, like again, like 12 or 13, um, there is this place called the Don Q Inn. So it is, um, I don't even know what year it was built in, but all the rooms are themed. So we stayed in the up, up and away room, which is like you're in a, um, you're in like a hot air balloon. Have you ever seen this Don Q in? Yes, yes, I have, yeah. yeah. It's totally kitschy. So there's like the igloo room, the cave room, the lobby's got this huge fireplace that has all these like crazy dentist chairs around it. So if you wanna have like a really Atlas Obscura, off the beaten path, kitschy trip, you could stay in Dodgeville and then you could go to the house on the rock and then one thing that i didn't include in here sparta wisconsin is really amazing so that has like miles and miles of um train tracks that were converted into bike trails so that i mean you could bike all those bike trails so yeah so those are the wisconsin those are my favorite wisconsin ones and i thought we'd just dive in for a minute and kind of show some atlas obscura ones let me just see if anybody's talking to us on Facebook here. Um, nope, nobody yet. So we'll go back. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Atlas Obscura so you can see, we can look at Wisconsin places. So yeah, like I said before, I mean, this is, Oh, and I didn't even know there's a fiberglass mold graveyard in Sparta. <laughs> so Wisconsin has a ton of really cool places. Never been. Janine, have you been to any of these? I've been to the Mars Cheese Castle. Mars Cheese Castle, um, Schoolhouse Beach, Washington Island Church, Cave of the Mounds is cool. Mm -hmm. Have you done Cave of the Mounds? No. The American Science and Surplus is really fun to go to. Really? You've been there? Yeah, the cool. um, Apostle Island Caves. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just full of junk. I mean, it, it's just nice. lots of fun stuff to buy. It's been around for years. This guy who kind of looks like John Stamos shops here. That's funny. Okay, what else? Let's see what else. Um, Well, obviously, Al Johnson. Yeah, the, the art museum is fantastic. Just, you don't even need to go in the museum in Milwaukee. You can just um, go in the building. Yeah, I don't know, this Rudolph Grotto Garden. Hey, I've got some good trips. I oh, yeah, find. that Grotto Garden. I've been wanting to go there. I've looked at that. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, that would be a very, oh yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. I think I might just quit my job and create a weird tourist attraction. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, um, there's one up in, um, oh there, the Mary Noel House. That is cool. Where's the Mary Noel Milwaukee? House. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's up in on the shore of Lake Michigan, like uh, up nor in the north part. And there's these, all these, uh, the house is vacant. It's kept up by the family, but there's no one in there. And there's all these sculptures that she's made just for herself. It's really a cool place. Yeah. Let's see. Well, the Paps Mansion. Yeah, been there. Been there. 
been to the Shaker Cigar Bar. They're supposed to be ghosts. Oh, yeah. You know what? I've been there, too, and they do yeah. ghost tours. Um, yeah, I've done a ghost tour there. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Oh, I've, oh, tried I've been to, to the, the Greek Holler Church. Oh, yeah. you have? Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, the Lake Michigan Triangle in Manitowoc. Whoa, I'm going to check know. that out. What's that? Besides like the a Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> yeah, they have a reputation for, they have a bizarre reputation there for. Hmm. The Hollow House, have you ever gone uh, yeah. duck there? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a weird, a little bowling alley. Yeah. Let's see what else they've got here. Oh my gosh, I've been here, the moccasin bar. It's so interesting. They have see like ta taxidermy scenes in the place. It's just so bizarre. Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> up in Hay up in Hayward, Wisconsin. It's oh I mean, it's yeah, there's some really fun stuff in Hayward. Yeah, well, yeah. they have the, the world's, like, largest muskie there, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Circus World Museum is fun. Oh, and of course, I've seen the bronze fawns. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen the hoed egg. I've seen Ryan it, Rinder. yeah, years ago. Oh, Yerkes is Wait. so cool. Wait, for... I think you pe it was one of the last ones. There are Yerkes. And I would recommend going to this if you're in the Lake Geneva area. Williams Bay is um, it's in, uh, just one of the little towns on Lake Geneva in uh, Geneva Lake. Wait, no, Lake Geneva. Yeah. Uh, down in um, uh, southern, southeastern Wisconsin. And it is really cool. It's an old observatory um, and it had the largest refractory um, telescope. I took a bunch of kids there back about 20 years ago and it was a really um, foggy night so we never got to use the telescope but the building is fantastic and um, it's it's run by a university now but I would it's a great place to go beautiful and what's nice about um, going to Lake Geneva is that you can walk all the way around that lake because you can walk on people's lawns. It's open to the public. So the area that's right next to the lake, uh, that path that goes around the lake, even if it's on, you know, Wrigley's old mansion, you can still walk on it. You wow. Can spend, it's 27 miles. I don't know. I mean, you can do half, um, but uh, I've done that with friends and it's it's a great day trip. Wow, and this observatory, the grounds are beautiful. Oh, they're beautiful. It's just a cool thing. What the heck is a refractory? It, well, it had, it had to do with the mirrors and everything and now it's all digital stuff, um, but um, it had cool. to do with mirrors and things. Yeah. Let's look at more. Let's see what else do we have here. Elvis Karate Fight Plaque, Toy Train Barn. There's so, I think there's more since the last time I looked at yeah. this too. I mean, who wouldn't want to see the world's heaviest ball of twine? <laughs> wow. There's tons of stuff. And then, you know, what I was saying is, is like, if you just, oh yeah, oh, the Dodgeville. So this is, they've got the, train, the, the, plane there, but they don't show any of the rooms on there. But anyway, it's got a big like strato fighter plane. National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum. Oh, yeah. Chatty Bell. I've seen her. It's a, the pig that talks. Oh, and the, the world's largest muskie in Hayward, Wisconsin.
Yeah, so, I mean, it's just endless. Like, you could use this website and just plan the coolest trip. Oh, Hamburger Charlie in Seymour. I've actually went through there. They have a hamburger festival every year. Did you know that? Yeah. Um, I'm going to mute my audio for a little bit. Okay. I have a patron. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, lots of cool things on Alice Obscura. Um, so, kind of when we talk a little bit more about Wisconsin places, um, I wanted to share a couple of books we actually have in the library. Um, one of them is Weird Wisconsin. Um, we have a copy of that at Egg Harbor Library. This was a Janine recommendation. Um, so it kind of goes through like bizarre beasts, like, you know, lake monsters, UFO places. Um, oh, yeah, there's a UFO days actually. UFO capital of Wisconsin in Elmwood, and then there's Belleville in Dane County, and then there's Dundee in Fond du Lac County. So just goes through another like good selection of oddities. So yeah, there's that book. And then there's also this one that we have um, that's called Strange Wisconsin, that also has some cool Wisconsin um, trips in it. Um, and then, of course, we've got a copy of um, Atlas Obscura here. This is my copy, so it's a little bit dirty and um, used. But uh, yeah, so those are some really great tools that we have um, available at the library and then also free stuff that you can find online. Um, I'm going to go to Facebook here to see if we have any questions from people. Um, all these videos are available on the um, YouTube page. Um, and then they're also available on the Door County Libraries page and the Crest Pavilions page. Um, right now we're open, so it's kind of a balancing act of Janine being with the programs or helping patrons. Um, but we do have some other cool programs coming up this month. Um, next Tuesday, Janine um, will review how to travel the world for free. So um, just from her experiences of what she's done to live in places for free um, and travel for free. Uh, and then on the 27th, the Between the Pages book club will actually discuss um, the Dutch house, not travel related. Um, but we'll discuss that book. So if you don't, if you haven't read it already, you can pick it up at the library, just call Janine. Um, and then next month, we are covering COVID hobbies. So um, things that people picked up on um, over, over the COVID um, span of our lives and, um, you know, people share different hobbies that they have. So it doesn't look like we have any questions on Facebook. But um, feel free to uh, reach out if you have any questions. And again, this will be available as a recording. So thank you so much and have a great day.